Carl's got his first little direct debit, haven't you? Five quid a week or something, quite a bit a month. Yeah, I've, I've joined some, uh, something to help Africa out. Mm -hmm. Um, I quizzed her for a bit. I mean, she came over and she was saying- she, He was talking to her for about forty minutes. <laughs> yeah. Just making yeah, was, sure yeah. your money was going right to the right place. Yeah, I was saying, you know, uh, why have I got to give you my bank details? This is the thing. And I was saying to her, I'm sure you'd make more money, right, if you just had a little thing that you put money in. I said, I, I want to help you out, right, but it's the fact I've got to give you bank details. And she's saying, no, this is the way we guarantee we make money uh, and, uh, you know, we can help places out because we could be out all day and we could only earn like 50p, whereas, yeah. you know, we know that it's worth us standing around. Yeah. So I was like, well, fair enough. So, so what's what's my money going to be doing then? And I think it's called uh, uh, care care of the world or something. Yeah. And she's saying we're giving them uh, money to buy hammers, and we're not just going to give them money to blow in and stuff. They've got to like work and. and they don't it. give them money. Well, whatever. what did you think <laughs> of these people? Just like uh, <laughs> and these these drought planes. Like it's a gift voucher for being you. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to buy a hammer. No, but they, they, they go with the buckets and go, oi, and they throw it up and they go, bundle! <laughs> yeah. She, she was making out anyway, right? That, she was nice enough, she was selling it to me, she said, you know, we give them the tools and they feel good because they're building up their own place and everything. Mm. And, uh, so fair enough, right? And now, I've done that for two months, so they've had a tenner off me already. <laughs> I'm checking it, making sure they're not ripping me off and that. Yeah. If I ever go to Africa and I need a hammer, <laughs> and there isn't one. Yeah. I'll be livid. You'll be livid. Because, mm. you know, it is a lot of money. Sure, sure. Every, every month, fiver. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about people hassling you and that in the street. I actually moved flat. The last flat I lived in, I moved from there because of the, the hassle. That really? was Yeah, it was a high street and you couldn't, like you were saying, you'd nip out for a loaf and spend about 40 quid. Yeah. <laughs> just, just on people saying, give us the money for this. <laughs> Samaritans, <laughs> tramps, heart attacks, yeah. old yeah. people or whatever. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. So it, it ended up pushing me off that street. It was no, like, I, I can't handle this. It's, get, it's getting crazy out there. They measure well those little stalls. Yeah. Hey, but listen, let's make the world a better place with a little bit of music. Oh, thanks. A bit of Bauhaus. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting sight of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> are, are they against wearing a helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Oh, it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be, you gonna be popping, down, popping down there and cheering them on? Uh, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think, you know, generally we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world, and it's going to run out one day, and we've not talking, got any alternatives. Uh, talking of, um, uh, campaigns and, uh, things and that, um, did you see, uh, um, Sir Bob on, um, Jonathan Ross last night? Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you going to walk to, uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, he's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but... Probably won't, won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night and I respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but... I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm just saying is, uh, it's, it's good that he's, he's given up a lot of his time to, you know, try and save the world and that, but, you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like, you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right, well, what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's, he tried it before and... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most, uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can, they can wipe out the, the third world debt. Mm. I.e. They, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's going to say, let's, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's your thinking? 
<laughs> no, I just I mean... knew I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I had ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for, the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know... Look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna roll up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you, but I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <clears throat> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go, can I have some more money? And she goes, I gave you a quid before, and I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. Uh, so, so you think that's what's gonna happen with- That's with, a, that's with a nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there, that the Africans are, uh, are blowing it down the arcade? <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade! They're trying to- they are trying- I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. I just As Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. It's always gonna fall out of the little claw it's with the, the claw is not strong enough. <laughs> yeah. Do not waste the- no, oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge. 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 another song, mate. They've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So no, that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a- it's a- Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Saturday- Yeah, don't worry, Carl is not gonna be put in charge of G8. It's not gonna be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what in one some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's uh, what what are you what are you gonna do? You're you're the only you know, the only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there. We've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, loads. I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, for what? Oh, I'll give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what, stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean. Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh- Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver, paying right. for, uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm going to stop, to be honest. Why? Because um, do you know this? Do you know this thing I do, Steve? Right? No. This is this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got got I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, "Oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold. Are you going to help her out?" <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, why me?" Right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called I don't know. To call the name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So <laughs> it does to her, but go on. <laughs> so uh so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and, and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up. And you know, look after her, pay for her food, and what have you. So for a bit, you feel good, don't you? And you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. No, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. And this is this is what I mean. People turn them, if they can get away with it. That I don't know where to start. That isn't having a go though. Oh, what do you think? So what do you think? You think they're going? Don't don't bother, don't bother um, getting a job or anything. Get off of me, and then get off of me. It's June. Oh, I don't isn't know. It? I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So but you I'll... think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time? Is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave them to it? Just leave them to it. Let them sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, oh, just think, carry on? Do you know what it? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not with words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that, that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? 
I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that, do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up. Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that. Locals will love that. Right. <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live act. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. What's it's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right? I'm not gonna go- I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs> right. Play record. All right, what are we having? Bit of, uh, bit of killers? Yeah. Big day Carl, though, isn't it? There's, cause he's, you know, there's lots going on, and I know Carl's very- it's very, very important for him that he, he champions live age. I don't know what's going on. I, d I don't know what- I, I am sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> Sick of what? Just sick of reading about it. Sick of this live eight thing. Sick of it all. Brilliant. Fed up with it. What, what annoys you particularly? It. It's not only that today though, is it? Um, on the way in today, right? Saw a gay fella <laughs> on is a bike. Weird? On a bike, rushing. What time did the gay march start? What, what time did it have to be? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was he was rushing, left it late, so he'd had a late night again. So my point's right about him. Well, right. so what was your point about just two people who just uh, tuned in? Well, the fact that they they go out late, so you know they they sort of have a nice night out from about half past eleven. <laughs> <laughs> They're riding in the jeans at like <laughs> half past ten. In their jeans. <laughs> they leather trousers. But anyway, right? So They're cutting the back out of their leather trousers <laughs> <laughs> about half ten at night. <laughs> I'm on the way in, right, and I see one stressed out, rushing, right, on a yeah. racer, yeah. wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. He's 50's dad, isn't he? <laughs> he's got, he's angry, he's just angry. If you're a gay fella and you're, um, you're proud to be gay, but you also want to make poverty history, you don't know what to do today, do you? You're all racing all over the place. Uh, it's been murdered. It seems a bit unfortunate that they've put them on the same day. Yeah. Well, you, you, can get, you can get little, um, little leather studded. Uh, wristbands that say right. make public history. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can join in you on can, both You parts. can kill two birds at once then, yeah. yeah. But why is Live 8 stressing you out? It's for a good cause, you must have, um, you know, we, I know we've discussed this in the past and you don't really know what you're talking about, but... I mean, may maybe that's the problem, I'm just, uh, I don't know, I mean, I could, I could have told them ages ago that there was no way that they were gonna pay it back. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I love that. But they didn't consult you, did they? When they were handing out this money willy-nilly to people who were dying, you could have had a quiet word oh. with them. You all, all I'm saying is- You could I have said to Harold Wilson, Harold, don't, don't, you're not gonna get this back, mate. Obvious. You are not gonna get this back, Obvious. mate. When I worked in mortgage, I had to supply three wage slips, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I was double checked out loads of times. <laughs> Well, I'd then. like to see, um, have you ever seen that guy Alvin Hall who gives financial advice to perhaps teenagers who don't know how to spend their money wisely? Mm, all right. Perhaps like send him over there, he's a guy with the, the bow tie. Oh yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Like, send him over there and just sort of have a chat with him and say, yeah, no, yeah make, a, make a list of what you're so, sending it on. So he's basically, are you, are you, will you be annoyed if they drop all debt and double aid and everything? No, no, because I mean, you know, people sometimes need help and that, don't they? You've got to help people out, but yeah. it's, it's, it's how many times is the thing. Do you know what I mean? Let them off. But, but do I, uh, you know, I, I've got this, uh, monthly payment at the moment, haven't I? Yeah. I'm paying for tools for people out there who need right. a drill to build a house or whatever. Yeah. Am I now in my right to say, well, you can't have it all. Do you want the drill or do you want the debt cancelled? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm all happy to help people out. Do you think, do you think they're taking us for a mug? Is that what you think you might well, be taking? Well, we'll see, won't we? Time will tell, won't we? You know I mean, if, if next year at the same time, Geldof's putting on another gig. I'll go, what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> Geldof putting on another gig! And the mean fiddler! What's going on now? I uh, think you're missing out on the true meaning of today, Carl, which is an opportunity to see Keen for free. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't right. like crowds and that, do I? Right. Can't be dealing with that. Don't like big crowds. 
people, because I was talking to people at work about it and they were saying, oh, you know, it's a big occasion, it's one of them events, like, you've got to be down there because in years to come, when they say, you know, we are there, I don't see what's good about having a memory being stuck in a crowd of 150,000 people. I prefer to uh, do something nice, say if I, if I have like a nice cake and a cup of tea, right? <laughs> In years to come, when when they go, do you remember that day when we were all cramped and what have you? I'll go, no, I was on a nice cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> so I've got a nice, nicer memory than them. <laughs> uh, so I believe in doing something nice on a big occasion, do you know what I mean, on a special day. Do yeah. something nice, remember that. The thing is, you have got a nicer memory than them because when you look back and they say what you're doing 20 years ago, your memory will tell you you were actually having a um, cup of tea and a cake but with a chimpanzee that could talk English. That's what your memory will tell you. <laughs> you know, oh, I was, I was out with my mate, I was out with my mate, Marty, he's a chimp. And it just, you're, you'll be in cuckoo land by the time you're 50. You'll be just wanting to go, that was great that day, remember? Suzanne? Suzanne, I don't know what I'm talking to Suzanne, she's left you. She's left. She's had enough of you waking well, up. Well, she's going. down in High Park watching Bed Shaped live. <laughs> <laughs> she's not worried about cake and a cup of tea. Have you ever done a march or anything? Though? Have you ever sort of what are you saying? Have you ever? Have you? You know, you're having a go at me for not getting behind it all, right? Which I am because I'm, I've got more standing orders going out of my account for charities than anything, yeah. right? But are you? Have you ever got behind a, a, a you know a problem? No, I don't think I have. To be fair, no, no. No, I am quite slack in that respect. It does take a lot of effort, though, doesn't it? Well, it depends. What sort? Well, you know, if you're gonna do one of those walks from John O'Groats to Land's End or something, that's a lot of time commitment. There's one, I tell you what, there is one that's, that looks alright. On, um, Portland Place, just off Oxford Street, there's always, uh, just a little Chinese fella sat on the pavement. Right? Oh, I've seen him, yeah. What's that all about? Yeah. He's just sat there with a poster, but you don't know what it's for because it's in Chinese. Yeah. So he's just, he's just always sat there. But that's a nice, that's, for me, that's the sort of march I want where you just, and he's only there when it's sunny, if it's raining they don't bother. I tell a lie, I did pop down when all those women walked through London in their bras. <laughs> <laughs> A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat for an African family. So you say, this is what I've bought, I've bought goat. Yeah. And, and they go, oh, brilliant, where is it? And you go, no, it's going to uh, a family in Africa. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat. That and will help uh, them for years And it's, it's like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving... You yeah. know, particularly this seasonal time, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are they are they happy with the present over there, like the people who are getting it? What the African family? Yeah, is the African family sort of going? Oh, I hope someone gets us a goat. That's nothing to do with Christmas for them. They're not sitting around w w w thinking, "I wonder if Santa brings us some food." It's a l it's a long term thing. These are happening all year, I assume. It goes towards a pool of money that goes to. It's not like they get a. You, you're an idiot. What, you think an African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied <laughs> round it and they go, oh, look what Santa brought us. Look, and that mince pie's gone and that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, 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 but what I'm saying is, does, does that, fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when not that they want a goat, it's they need a goat. Do you think, what right, do you think it, this organisation no, is? No, 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 they're gonna, they're giving gonna, goats to They're gonna say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what are you, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, <laughs> let me put myself in, in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Got any, but, but say, say, <laughs> say, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, right, over there, right? I'm hungry, right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right? I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right? <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go round for themselves, never mind a goat. <laughs> Don't they say, like, having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it, <laughs> the, the food, the tin food and everything, it mounts up. And what I'm saying is, that's all very well giving them a goat, who's looking after it? Well, I'm assuming it's all above board. The goat's had its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's given to them so they can milk it and 
have milk and cheese and whatever. I, I, I don't think it's a burden. I very feel... Well, I don't, what is this? What, what do you mean? They, they wake up Christmas Day and open a present. It's not what, like that. So there's that. a thing. It's, there's a goat-shaped thing in wrapping paper. I wonder what that could be. I hope it's. Uh, I hope it's that goat we asked for. Oh my God, it all, is. All I'm saying it's is just. A, it's just a nice marketing way of distributing wealth. It's the way of going. This is a nice gift. It's like people sometimes they say, "Don't send flowers at a funeral." They don't send flowers. Uh, give it. Give some money to the local hospice. Yeah. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? <laughs> to, what. Who? What's the main? What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right now, wouldn't it be easy to to just send them a bottle of milk <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it? That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat that was happy over here. <laughs> Suddenly, it's on barren land, no grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> You didn't send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? <laughs> so, 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 yeah, let's do this. Let's do this properly. So, there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> then you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's going to look after this, right? So, tick. They're not happy, and then you've got the goat going. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> See, what's annoying me is I've sent money to Cambodia because apparently they're hungry and haven't got any energy. So what's going on? Well, it's it's much easier to, to, to fill up a midget than it is a regular Cambodian. You know, they, mm, they, they're, they're happy on, like on a Mars I'm, I'm being cheated a bit. You were conned before with a charity, weren't you? Well, a few times, yeah. With a, what about the the old lady? What was that? I got stopped. And it's like, uh, they, they sort of drag you in by saying, have you got a gran? And I said, no, they died and that. It's like, oh, did they die of the cold? No, you know, ill, what have you, just, just old age. He said, well, what happens with a lot of people's grands is they die in the cold, right? So I was like, oh, that's bad, isn't it? Anyway, so she's chatting and she's showing me pictures of these old women who look cold, right? Saying, look at her, that's Edna. You know, she's got no family, she, she can't pay the bills and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Anyway, it goes on for about 15 minutes and you, you feel bad. You give them your bank details, right? And what happens is every couple of months you get a letter from Edna, well, it's, right. it's not from her, it's typed up and what have you, but, but there's a picture of Edna, right, and it's saying, oh, this December, you know, Edna's going to be extra cold, it's cold outside, she can't afford to pay the heat and what have you. Yeah. Keep going, right, so you keep paying every month, like, five pounds or whatever, get another letter, a few months later, right, Edna's sat there, she's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean she's got a tan? Well, when they said, you know, she's cold, I thought they meant for the heating, not to send her on holiday for a month. <laughs> She sat there with a the tan. I'm not joking. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just a sort of a slight problem in the printing? No, no, definitely. Sure she, it wasn't she looked well happy. Sure it wasn't liver failure. This is a terrible thing to say, but when I see those people approaching now with the clipboards on the street, yeah. I always get my mobile phone out and pretend yeah, I have a conversation. I've done that one. The number of fake conversations I've had walking past them now. Well, I felt sorry for them, right? Because I thought, uh, that, you know, to be fair, I, I, I've got about ten standing orders where yeah. I felt sorry for them on court, right? I thought, they're doing a good deed, the least yeah. I can do. I find out they're on about eight quid an hour. Are yeah. they? Yeah. They're not just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. Well, I don't want to I lie I thought they were volunteers. I thought that was at least why I should feel guilty. If no. they're getting paid to do it. I don't know. That could be wrong. I think they do. What? I've heard they get, they get paid and that. Well, if someone knows, maybe uh, email you know, us. Email podcast at rickygervais.com is how you can get in touch with us. Because if, if you know if these guys are getting, uh, are fleecing us twice. Uh, you know, I, I, I heard something. Carl thinks they are. You, you think they're not. I don't know anything, but no, I, anything that will allow me. But to let's not find out because uh, you know I don't want to. I don't want to slag them off because they're obviously doing a good. thing, So we find this out. It's, uh, you know, this is an educational show. I tell you what, though, right? Because we've we've talked about homeless people before and that. And I walked past one the other day. He's always cheerful, right? But don't you think, right? If you had a company, it's worth taking them on because they never have a lie in. Brilliant. I'm finding it quite exhausting now because a lot of the homeless I've encountered recently, they don't even now, they're not even after my money. They're just, they're just looking for conversation. While I was walking along the other day, and I don't know what you're supposed to say to this, mm. we were both walking, happened to be both passing a Chinese restaurant. He glanced in, he looked, he looked back around at me, he went, woman in there with three phones, three mobile phones. Why does she need three mobile phones? Mm. Got nothing to say to that. Got no opinion. Got absolutely no opinion of it. And I was thinking, what's going to have, you know, and you know that thing when you sort of suddenly you got across the road conveniently to just get out of it, but, and there was another mad woman who started going, she, she was walking past me, she went, do you want to come to my church? I went, no, I, I don't believe in God. She went, do you believe in God? Oh, 20 minutes. Conversation, 20 minutes. 
It was unbelievable. I got to a point where I was so angry with her, I was shouting at her from across the other side of the room. I was the one who sounded like a nutter, going, <laughs> there isn't a god! And, but, you see, when, when does it become, like, bad to avoid people like that? Do you know what I mean? Because some people say you shouldn't, you know, that they're, they're people, they're people like us, they've just had a bit of bad luck. Well, of course they are. Yeah, I know, but I remember one on, on our estate, right, and she was a bit, what's, what's the word that you can use, because I don't want to offend anyone. But I'd, I'd say, me, men, yeah, but sort of mental homeless. Is that a term? <laughs> that's the official term. That's, I think that is the, that's that the, is the that's, new official yeah. term. It's, it's mental homeless-itis. Right, so <laughs> she, uh, she lived on the estate and what have you, and she aged pretty... How was she homeless if she lived on the estate? Well, she sort of decided to stay around there, because I think oh, people right. on the estate spoke to her more than people who had money. Do you know what but, I mean? Really? I was going to say, why would, they, why would she choose an estate to not to live in, as opposed to, a, like, a, a, a walled... Sort of lovely community. Yeah. What? What? Why well, not go to St John's Wood or? Yeah. yeah or well, I'd hang around in maybe say the maze in Hampton Court. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because yeah. no one's no one's expecting to see a homeless person as they're trying to find their way around. Well, the, the, imagine the, the, the cash you'd make during the summer. The, the rich sort of Victorians used to keep sort of homeless in there as a little folly, and they used to pay them um, at the end if they stayed there for like three years. Uh, what, where, what do you mean? Were they paying? It was to fashionable what? to have a little like a little uh, homeless little hobbit in your in your outhouse. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> And, and what did they have? Did they have to do anything for the money? Run, dance, no, they just had to be there. No, they had to, they had to be there when they brought around. They go, look, that's our that's our little um, cat weasel fella <laughs> right. living living in our folly. Yeah, and then they were they got money, you know, at the end of it. There's just like really rich sort of Victorians and stuff. That's yeah. a great idea. They should definitely bring that back. Because, you see, I would give a lot more to shelter and, and those kind of charities if I could have a homeless guy if they, and do my bidding. I could make him And dance. they had a really long beard yeah. and rags. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, they could, I could just make them do dances for me or, you know... And it was somewhat magical, possibly. That yeah, would go, Riddle me dee, fiddle me do, <laughs> what is my name and yeah. who are you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But oh, anyway, yeah. so this mental There's a little homeless... idea for shelter if anyone's listening. Yeah. Mental homeless woman on mm. the estate. Um, and what she used to do... Right, she she acted quite normal, and she used to always push push like a, a pram around with her. Right, and everyone was like, "She can't have a kid, can she?" Right, and she was dead happy every day. She was up and down, walking up and down the road. Anyway, one day she got to walk past. Right, turned round and looked in the pram. There's a bucket with a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also rednosedaycom which is uh, if you particularly want to donate for this year's appeal. Are you have you always been a, a strong champion of comic relief, Carl? Not really. Um, Why was I expecting that answer? No, well, this is, but I mean, we're doing a bit of charity now. We're donating our time. It's not much. It's not costing anything. It's a but I do loads of stuff without going on about it. That's, mm. I don't. I don't think you should shout about the bitch you do for charity because then who are you doing it for? Oh, exactly. I mean, well, this is my thing, isn't it? That. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that only do it if it's in the public eye. It's to do it really to be a busybody or to show off or to feel good about themselves. And I suppose that's good and bad. I mean, if it gets you involved, if it does some good, my gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we, we prefer blankets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, no, if, you, if you make have, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But you just mean, giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. Well, they it shouldn't is. Have it. They're it getting shouldn't. something for nothing, but it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's giving something away that you have no use for. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, mean, but, but forget that. It's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is. It, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism. It's it. It's usually to do with them um, giving a, a piece of something that is kindly because you could do with it. I mean, not not strictly. I think you can give away something you don't need, but it, it's hardly donating a kidney, is it, or some of your wages? It's like it's not charity on your part because you're literally not around anymore. So it's no longer you giving it, it's just some yeah, but money I could, that I could either was. give it them or not give it them. Once I'm dead and I've turned to mush, I shouldn't be worrying about Suzanne's mum getting a table. <laughs> is but, that what, is that what you're leaving her? Well, I've, I've called up my dad first. Why are you said, doing a will for the show? Because of this travel thing that right, I'm yeah. doing, and it can get dangerous, you know. But after. why have you done a will up to now? Because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. 
<laughs> Whereas now, I'm... <laughs> never, that's never two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, and exactly, I'm certainly yeah. never, the idea that you're free. It's, it's more... It, it, even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's, <laughs> it's the, it's the head of a late fifty-year-old. Free of hair? Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. Oh, mm. really? Chatting more. Oh, what is it this time? How's your yeah. middle finger? You Not know. too bad, Carl. All, all that sort of thing, so it's just made me think- Have you had that done for the will, by the way, for insurance? I think you stuff? need to, don't you, for a will? I think you do. There's nothing the on the paper. Yourself. No. No, uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have, um, a, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for testicular cancer, actually, and you're, you're entering the high risk for prostate. Cancer. And you can have both at the same time. You could have both at the, same time. at the same time. If he's a very dexterous doctor, um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like it's just too, too much painful. going on. It's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad, called him up. I said, "Is there anything you want if, <laughs> in, if, I, if I die?" Right. And presumably, you know, Suzanne, she's getting the she's getting the lion's share. She is. But then the fellow who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, oh, you should get married. I was going, oh, shut up. He's saying, well, it makes it things a lot easier when it comes to this. And it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well. So she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on the bit of paper that she mm. can have it. I'm not bothered. What, I'll what be dead. you wrote? What did you wrote? You know, all that, whatever's, whatever we've got, she can have. Yeah. Great. Well, that's fine. That's as good as a, yeah. a marriage then, isn't but it? But it's something about, um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. Well, she'll get, uh, yeah, I suppose if it's money, she'll pay tax on it. Yeah. I think you get so much and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yep. But she's going, you that's why we should get married, I'm gonna be paying tax. I'm going, hang on a minute, she's already like thinking about money loss <laughs> instead of me b disappearing. Yeah. She's going, yeah, we should. And I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. I said, if I die on this program anyway, mm. I'm insured, you'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's, that's something you haven't got now. Yeah. Got nowhere near that now. <laughs> I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Well, you are married, aren't you, with it? Well, then you better get the paperwork. No, because then everyone wants a party. You don't have to have a party, you can go straight down honestly, the office. Honestly, people start going, oh, you should do this, and oh, it's not a proper wedding unless you do that. Have you also two sets of parents met? No. That'd be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's a reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. <laughs> Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, I think, uh, it doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened. It's I too said late. that. I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said, if, if it was like, we'd got to do it for some reason, mm. I said, I'd do that. You, we can have it done by two, you can be back in work for three. <laughs> because at the end of the day, there's no other, there's no, you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. You're not gonna suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Ed Ryan film <laughs> just because we got married. Yeah. It's gonna be the same, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Except she'd want a joint bank account or something. That's mm. the only other thing mm. that would probably change and I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just, I like to know what's going on. There's enough people sticking their hand in my account, charity-wise and all that, without an extra hand going in. <laughs> Who is, happens to be the love of your life. I'm not moaning about it, I'm just saying it works the way it is. You hear about people getting married and it doesn't last. Adds extra pressure. <laughs> what pressure's it gonna add? Um, It's not gonna add any pressure. I suppose that you yeah. resent the fact that the only reason you'd be getting married is because she gets your money after your death tax-free. What if you gave her a series of challenges so that she sort of I earned the it, right to have that it money? It just keeps her on her toes. <laughs> because whilst we're not married, <laughs> it's easy to go, I'm sick of this. So mm. it keeps it, it keeps it keeps sort her of, on her toes. Yeah. But it keeps us both sort because of Because you're stuff. such a find, she's got to yeah. work hard to keep you, hasn't she? When you, what have you, what, you never do anything in order to sort of maintain this relationship, as far as I can tell. I'm not saying Loads. you're not, you're a bad mate, but in terms of was, romantic Meg Ryan type stuff, wh right. wh you never do anything. Me and Jane were out with them and Suzanne the other night, right, at, at dinner, and honestly, he is so, so grumpy. He was saying about, uh, uh, for Christmas, right, he said, you've had a flaw. <laughs> you've had a flaw. <laughs> now, what did that mean? 
We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you mean. But don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady, that's, that's a gift. Not yeah. a new floor. That is like something that you give to some little African fella on comic relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He didn't <laughs> yeah. have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him a floor. I, I remember watching it with you and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor, he went, hold on, floor or shoes, <laughs> not both. <laughs> oh. When, when that tsunami hit and, uh, it was like a month after Christmas, they showed, um, that Britain had given two billion pounds, right? He was going, that's enough. He said, before, they were living in mud huts. Now there's an Arndale Centre. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you think charity is all right as long as people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little, little booster. Something's happened that they didn't expect. They're all a bit in shock. I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll feel bad because all they ever seem to do, these countries that are struggling, they never give anything back. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid, people mm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd just pretend they Charity weren't Charity starts at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was the pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door. Well, you just, because the front room was near the door so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either well, you can't so like hear like some sort of predator, like, they can't see you if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there not moving. So he looked through <laughs> and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> right, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him. Yeah. And well, him confused. Well, not they're clearly dead, I'll move on. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there's there's, there's obviously been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you, did you say sitting or stand up or no. did you sort of like throw yourself no, to we the just, floor? No, we just sat, we just sat on, on the, you know, where you were and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see I you I don't know, because you didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door? It's easy, it's honestly, the amount of times people would come round, it's right. either, it seems to be the 80s had a lot of it, because it was yeah. all the Avon thing, wasn't it? It was perfume, yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware? Yeah, the plastic <laughs> boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's dishes for fat people. Uh, here we go. Oh, these are big, good they are. They're for fat fuckers like you to eat out of. There was the pills, man. Right. Just a lot of charity stuff. Just a lot, it seemed to be the time, the 80s, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. Yeah. And oh, there's a lot of scavving. So, that, uh, that's why we used to ignore the door. <laughs> I just love this image of you. Yeah. <laughs> you're in silent. the lounge, yeah. you're having a little boogie, it's Christmas, someone's yeah. tapping on the glass. <laughs> Freeze! Freeze. <laughs> they just go, well, we'll move on. Yeah. Nothing yeah, here for yeah. us. Hammer time. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> there's a, uh, let, let, okay, right, let's do the scenario. I'm, I'm the door. Uh, I can, I can see you in there. You might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> it's working. Carl, your eyes are moving. <laughs> can you come to the door, please? <laughs> I suppose in the end you've got to move Carl, on. Carl, um, no, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here until <laughs> you I have to move. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> this is the most pointless podcast we've ever done. Me shouting your name and you pretending not to be here. Okay, and I'll move on then. Right. It Excellent. works. Yeah, works okay. perfectly. Because Brilliant. once they've got you, that's the whole thing with charity. Once they've stopped you in the street, if you've stopped, that's it. Keeps on going. You're handing, you're handing something over. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've been stopped. I mean, the good thing now is you've got an iPod, so you can just either pretend you're on the phone mm. or listen to music. Or just stay very still. <laughs> just freeze when someone says, Can I trouble you for. <laughs> oh, he's totally frozen. That would be amazing because they're normally in one spot, aren't they? Yeah. So it's just so they're carrying on they selling. Stop you, and so you've got to stay there for the rest of it outside waitress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for seven yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. It goes dark. <laughs> 
well, I'm, I finished my shift, I'm off. And then you just see, <laughs> you, your eyes just see them walk away like that and they all meet in their little tunics. And then you start walk. they look back and you freeze. <laughs> and then they walk on. And then you can go home. <laughs> Seven hours late. Ever since I was young, I've always liked going in charity shops, particularly because, you know, you can you find sort of interesting old records in there. Never sort of gone in there to buy clothes and stuff, but, you know, books, whatever. And, uh, I was in a charity shop, you know, and I've patroni patronised them for years. And I noticed stacked through the window, there was like a paparazzi guy, and he was taking pictures of me through the window. That was a bit weird. And obviously the old ladies in there didn't have any idea who I was, so they just thought that was a bit strange. And then it was in one of the, uh, the magazines, like the kind of celebrity magazines. Was, oh, here's Steve Merchant. You know, he, despite all the money he must have made from his various projects, he's still going in charity shops. And you just think, but so I, how is that a bad thing? I, I'm yeah, sure I'm I giving know. my money to a charity. Isn't that a noble cause? I mean, obviously that's not the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it to save 50p. To save 50p, of course, but. But they don't know they that. They don't know that. No. They you might be going there and going, keep the change, love. You never have said never that. Never said that. Never said that in your life. No, occasionally I'll shoplift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no mug. 70p? Don't you think that seems frustrating, though, that. Yeah, but what do you expect? They're, <sighs> what are they going to do? They're not going to say Steve Merchant, heart of gold, are they? I just thought all these things would slowly accumulate towards the OBE. Yeah, I know. I know. I think you've got to do a bit more than um, yeah. get. Uh, Roger Whitaker's greatest hits for 10p. <laughs> my mum's always in them. And, uh, because my mum goes in them, my dad sort of got into going into them now because, you know, the weather's not good or whatever and he thinks rather than standing outside. He, he went in one and he was after a jacket. Just like a, sort of a, you know, casual but quite smart. Yep. He's quite a big bloke, so it's difficult to find him, right? So he's in there sees the jacket, goes, oh look, here's, here's that sort of jacket that I'm after. Picks it up, tries it on, oh, it fits, it's good this, isn't it? She's going, yeah, yeah, well, she's looking at, you know, a toad that you put money in or whatever. Yeah. Mm. So he gets to the counter and it's got a price tag on it, eight quid, right? So he said, I'll give you, give you six quid. He had six quid in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah, give you six quid for that. She went, no, it's, it's eight pounds. Now that's wrong, isn't it? That's a that's a good price, and it's six quid. They've got it for nothing. Yeah. And she she wouldn't have any of it. He said, "Surely, surely something's better than nothing. If you don't give me this for six quid, it's going back on the back on the anger." And they, they said, "No, sorry." Yeah, but they might later sell it for eight pounds. But they might not, and it's been given to them for free. Yeah, so but what not... does it matter? But the the old who's come not... up with the price of eight quid? Who is this? Yeah. They but don't she's know not how much it's worth. She's not. There's a haggle. She, someone's priced up and she's just a volunteer who's, who's- Maybe she thought- maybe she thought of it that she was losing the charity two pounds as opposed to gaining it six. But they haven't, haven't gained anything because he put it back on and how many people want it? How many people are looking out for that jacket? It might have been the principal. She might have thought, oh, you can't haggle when it's for charity. It was a fair price. Someone- I give a lot of stuff to charity. A lot. Most of the time just because it's- it's nearer than the wheelie bin is. It's just a way of getting rid of garbage most of the time with me. <laughs> stick it all in a bin bag, good stuff on the top, the stuff that you're embarrassed about, yeah. stick it in the bottom of the bag. What are you embarrassed in, about? Just old shoes, trainers. Some of the books you've written. Uh, socks, socks, underpants. Underpants! You do not give underpants to charity. Washed. But who's gonna- <laughs> Washed, I know, as opposed to just like peeling them off. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't know why you've got a problem with underpants, but shoes. You see, I've Who's never buying shoes. underpants from a charity yeah. shop? Though? I mean, I don't care how low you are on the socio-economic level. I know. You can get about 14 pairs for a quid in some places. I know. I don't know who's buying underpants. <laughs> I don't know who's buying your underpants. <laughs> I definitely don't know. I mean, if they were signed. Yeah. That, that is something, that is something I like doing though. When I've given to charity, mm. I like going past the shop and seeing if it made it in the window. Mm. Any success? Yeah, re recently, the one not far from here had me, um, egg cups in the window. <laughs> so it's like, oh look, there's- What, there's you've that. got a new set of egg cups so you've got rid of your old ones? Yeah. I um, don't think we've got any egg cups. Haven't you? No. Why I don't not? think so. I don't- You don't have boiled eggs? Uh I can't imagine you- it- it would take- t you'd be too impatient to boil an egg, Rick. Well, I- I'm, yeah, I just don't- it's just those things you think of never buying, you know, like, you know, egg cups, a whisk. No, but you do eventually. I suppose you got to, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's things that were just always there when you grow up, isn't it? That you yeah. have to go and you think, you know, think of, but not second hand though. But there's nothing wrong, honestly, it's hardly been, I mean, it's made the window space. That's how good it was. It had hardly been used, that egg cup. Because mm. it was a doubler. And I think they were quite small for the egg size that I get. I think they were made more for the small egg. 
and I have the large egg. Right. So it was, it was never really Just used. like your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. Are you ever been a charity shopper, Rick? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what I used to do a lot of was, um, was records and, and, uh, tapes and things like that. But it ended up sort of being ironic. It really ended up, like, getting, you know, something like, uh, Shane Rich's greatest hits. Yeah. And things like that. A bit of a dilemma that, um, my auntie Nora had. She likes charity shops as well. Mm. Uh, she's got a neighbour. Went out to Graceland's big Elvis fan. They came back. She said, how was, how was Graceland's? She said, oh, it was brilliant. Best holiday we've ever had. Probably go back again. We've got a gift for you, right? They get out this clock, like a, like a little sort of, it's like a Swiss, you know, the Swiss sort of, um, looks cuckoo like a little clock. house, like yeah. a cuckoo clock. Mm. But on the hour, little Elvis comes out the top and goes, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> So she went, oh cheers, she's not really into Elvis, she's more into Jim Reeves and yeah, uh, yeah. Glenn Campbell and stuff. Yeah. But what can you say? She said, oh thanks, mm. thanks mm. for that. She put it in, took it in the house. Maybe they could uh, get attachments. Maybe you get a little uh, Jim Reeves to pop on the spring. <laughs> Change it anything you yeah. like. Like, uh, So Solid Crew, you can get a little So Solid Crew. <laughs> and, it, 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 and it, that pops out, or whatever. So know. anyway, it's in the house. She's thinking, I'm not going to put that up. It's not her sort of thing. So, uh, thinks, give it to charity. Of course. She goes down to the charity shop, gives them that, thinks nothing of it, goes off to the pub for an afternoon drink. Mm. <laughs> anyway, next day she's going out for an afternoon drink again. Passes the charity shop. It's in the wind. Oof. Ooh. And the chances are our friends are going to pass by. That was a dilemma. Of course. She had to buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. At a hugely inflated price. For those that are American listeners, Comet Relief here is a uh, sort of, um, it, it happens every other the year and you know people often do things um, in their workplace or at school, they can dress up, they can raise money in different fun ways and we were told in a school assembly, it was Comet Relief next Friday, right. everyone has to come along dressed up in fancy dress to school on that day. Has to? Yeah, they said they have to, have to dress up. They said, um, you pay 50p towards Comet Relief and you have to pay a pound if you don't dress up. Right? That's annoying, isn't it? So, I, of course, I'm looking forward to this because, you know, I'm a sort of aspiring comedian and that. Get to dress up like a clown. Right? Spent wow. quite a lot of time getting the old clown outfit together. What did that look like? The what shoes, obviously, I just wore my regular <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I had the red nose, a wig. Wow. You know, the whole deal. Bow, big bow tie that my mum made for me. Like, you know, I thought this is going to be the best day ever, right? Get to school. I want you to picture this scene, right? During the assembly in my class of 30. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. Lanky kid dressed as a clown. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school. There was three people in the entire school who dressed up. But Steve, you're fifty p. Yes, but then worse than that, it turns out I was furious because I looked like an utter dick. Obviously, um, it turns out that what happened. I don't know whether I missed this information, but apparently the headmaster must have had another assembly where he told people that he wasn't allowed to enforce that rule right. about making people pay well, that's good. against their will. Yeah. So obviously no one showed up dressed what, like an utter dick except what, me and what, about two other knobs. What disappoints me is that for a man who was um, a self-confessed uh, uh, aspiring comedian, you chose the least funny thing in the world to dress as. Yeah. It, clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not- You're right. And this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. He knows funny costumes when you think- <laughs> But you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. Because I used to, a technique I used to develop at university was whenever people bothered me in the street, I would pretend to be sort of generic foreign. I can't really do a foreign accent, but I would just be like, like if someone asked for directions, I was always worried about giving them the wrong directions, so I would just, sorry, I don't, I don't really, uh, how you say, you know, it's just yeah. kind of vague foreign. Brilliant. And I've periodically used this method throughout my life, and not so long ago a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics. And I sprang into my old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian one. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. I don't yeah, know what accent it went, it went from vaguely French yeah. 
to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, I don't know, I don't uh, he said, well, just, let me explain to you about, I, sorry, I'm not from, um, and the guy- This world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet <laughs> Snark. And the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear sorry. To God. Not when you were famous. Oh yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't. It hadn't occurred to me. I just. It was like a lapse no! of concentration. God. It oh, was a I lapse did. of concentration because. Um, and did your bow tie spin round <laughs> and you squirted in the water and ran away? <laughs> That's what I did. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> because I, you know it's one of those things where you know you don't always remember that you've been on the. T it's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, "Are you still a merchant?" And, I, and then you're in this position where you've got to go. Either you've got to admit what you did. Or you've got to carry on the lie, <laughs> and I chose the second one. <laughs> so I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know who that is. What? I don't know what you. And he was like, Oh God! Really? You look a lot like him. I was going, I've never heard. I don't. <laughs> in, in fact, you are Stephen Merchant. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting stopped for for. I mean, there's so many charities now. Anything. I think that's the other problem, actually. That there's so many now. Years ago, a problem wouldn't have been a problem. Whereas today, mm. it's someone's got this problem, someone's got OCD, and we're collecting for that. Right. It's not just starving people anymore. It's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah. A lot of new, bank details. A lot of new diseases have Definitely. cropped up, particularly for these sort of rich and famous diseases that 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 really. Uh, Weren't third around. world people do not suffer from. So I was in um, W. H. Smith's buying, probably buying a Valentine's card. Oh, uh, okay. So there you go, you see. So I do yeah. do a bit. And um, is this the cheapest one you've got, love? <laughs> and I bought, yeah. this, I bought a big bar of like um, Galaxy. Oh, cheaper okay. than a cheaper than a box of chocolates, but yeah, still nice for me. That because they had an offer oh. on, right? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm saying. Okay, she's getting a card, isn't this she? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I felt awkward because she could see that. Oh, he must have some money. What a big bar because you could afford a... some chocolate. Well, mm. it's, it was like an impulse buy thing. Yeah, right. So she's <laughs> thinking mm. he's got money to burn. Yeah. So yeah. at first I didn't yeah. know who she There's was. There's a guy over here buying a big bar of galaxy and a, and a, and a small card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, follow him. So she's dun, there, dun, 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 I'm dun, thinking dun, she dun, just works in WHMS. Yeah. Morning sir. Alright, how's it going? Right. Oh, have you got a minute? Mm. So I'm thinking, oh, is it WH Smith saying, you know, how often do you buy the galaxy? Because they always yeah. do sort of surveys yeah. and stuff. So That's she so. said, oh, you like chocolate? I went, yeah. She said, yeah, I'll have a chocolate. Right? Oh. Little chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah, then she goes, she right, uh, are you aware of the problems in the world? So I'm Ooh. thinking, oh, what's this? You see, they've been clever there. Yes. I can't say no and walk off, I'll add a bit of chocolate. Sure. Right. So Why don't you freeze? Um, Just freeze. <laughs> 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 We're closing up now. We're closing the shop. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, there's loads of problems, I'm sick of it. So she says, um, No, not yours, sir. There so, are some people who are starving. Yeah, and I explained to her, I said, listen, I said, I've got loads of these charities. Every right. month, right. so my bank account is literally because I, I don't use my current bank account that much. So right. you look at it with a statement. It's like tools for Africa, right? Help the aged, mm. deaf kids. Yeah. Um, there's another one. Dot com, deaf kids. Dot com. There's, 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 there's loads. It's tools for Africa when they send people like Carl over to help <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, that is comic relief. <laughs> tools for Africa is another name for comic relief if you watch it. So, um, so anyway, I said I do all this. She's going, oh, that's very good of you, but you know, w we we need your money as well. So she's saying, just just as much as you can afford, you know, every little helps and everything. I've been here all day. Look, as you can see, I haven't had much luck. It's not that busy in the shop. Blah, blah. Oh, all right then, right? So I give her the details. She looks at the amount. She goes, right now. The options are: we've got you can tick the five pound box, the ten pound box, the twenty pound box, the fifty pound box. This is a monthly payment. Right. She said, "Well, I'll put you down for a tenner. Forget the fiver. She just leapfrog that straight, straight away. <laughs> yeah. And you can't go back, can you? Because then you feel bad. Sure. To sort of go, well, you've got a five pound one there. Tick, tick that one. Yeah. She can see I've got the chocolate. Sort of wasting my money on things that aren't necessary yeah. when there's people dying around the yeah. world. Yeah. I said, right, yeah, tenner, fine, and. You know, I filled it all out. I left the shop. Yeah, spent more on that than I did on the card and the chocolate. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you spent under ten pounds then, basically. So <laughs> I get I get get home and everything, forget about it. I keep seeing these statements going out. It looks like Gandhi's bank account. The, the amount of stuff I'm giving away for charities. Sure. I forget about it though. Forget it. It's I'm doing my bit for charity. I should yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Anyway, something kicks off in the world. Right. Ring, 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 ring. Oh. Hello, is that Mr. Bilkinson? Straight away, I'm thinking, oh, who's this? This isn't good. Yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> it's so and so charity. Right. Are you aware of the problems in the world? I said, yes, I am. There's lots of them. Yeah, but have you heard about the latest one? I said, yeah. She went, well, I'm just calling up to say thanks for the donation that you give us every month, but it's not enough. So I said, yeah, well, I think I give enough. I said, you're not the only ones here. I yeah. said, I've got, I've got five charities on the go here. Yeah. I said, and, you know, I've give you what I can afford. Yeah. She's going, yeah, but let me just tell you about the problems. There's so many people missing here. This is bad. These are dying. Da da da. I'm going. I know. I know. I've, I was told all this when I signed up, mm. and I agreed to that amount. Yeah. The ten pounds that I said I'm happy to give you. That's what I can afford. Call some other people up who aren't giving you a tenner. Yeah. She goes, no, but we haven't got their numbers, you know, and we understand that you're a supporter of our charity, and you know, just a little bit more will help. I said, listen, I can't. I've give you that amount. If you want, if it's not enough, let's stop the direct debit now. Right. I said, if it's not helping you, <laughs> let's can it. Yeah. And I'll give it to deafkids.com. <laughs> I said, because they're not calling up mithering. No. Well, they can't. That's a good thing with them. So <laughs> she said, no, I, d I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it then. She, and, and she wouldn't let it go. And um, in the end, she got an extra £1.50 off me. Right. <laughs> but that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go this year, uh, you know, hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. <laughs> just like they do in, w with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit, it's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year, you're gonna have a good one. And who decides? Right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting a with- But who gets together in the meeting? Uh, the, what'll be the, the first year? So what'll be the first year? This year? Right, well, we'd- we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what- what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. Go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot of food? And we're not just going to give so them food. So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific people. So it's like hungry- Starving. People who are starving. If someone goes, oh, me, uh, uh, I've got, um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, what's another problem? Adenoids. Me, me kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once. Because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. There's things right. that I want, I can't have. I do without. Have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that. Right. But that's it could what I'm wait saying, 20 Steve. Years before okay. your charity I know, but what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Oh, oh I need out really bad. I'm paraplegic. But so does everyone else. Well, why are you giving us the hungry now? Because if that, we don't oh. help the hungry now, right? They they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah, well... Where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. Otherwise I'll be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this, this is just, it's just a chaotic idea. It's, it's a chaotic, not. because people who are hungry, there's, there's always gonna be people who are hungry. Yeah, but, but then- You're not gonna just, cause there's always gonna be new people. Yeah. yeah. But, but I sort the problem out. They've eaten all the food. It doesn't last forever, the but, food but part. But I sort it out properly. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What, you think you... they haven't Let thought of that? Let me hear the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's gonna run out. Right. Give them a proper- you see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all- do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? Right, when I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yeah. I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop. Mm. Because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so and so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out of Amazon with a computer. I saw it. They were using it as a breadboard <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric. It's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe. I wonder what their toilet facilities are like. Right. Mm. Thinking they might. It might be better than just doing it in a hole. 
Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know mm. how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company <laughs> had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet, mm. right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there. I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. I go round there, it is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. And this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. So it's just with the seeds. You're not giving them a... Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C you got any food? Got any... Got any food? Got any sandwiches? I'm well, they starving. have. But right. if I give you my sandwich, right. yeah. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you gonna do then? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna help you. How? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right. Well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground? Yeah. Put them in the ground and water oh. them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that, that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. there's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all, No, or you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it so now. not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald-headed fucking twonk. Right, but all I've done there is made the mistake of the computer firm who's given a laptop to a tribe. Right. It's useless. Right. But there's got to be another way around this. Go on then. Either move. Right. Because every year they're going to be queuing up saying, I'm hungry, give me a sandwich. <laughs> no, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an <coughs> utterly ill informed discussion. <coughs> I'm just saying, there's no <gasps> point queuing up oh. every year. Oh. If you want a sandwich, here's oh. a sandwich. But Carl, the next year, no. can I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> It's oh not God. sorting anything, it's buying him an extra day, an extra month or something. But it's Carl, the point is, like Wiki's just flagged up, is that some of these countries, <laughs> the, <laughs> the he conditions- He died! The conditions are not there to just be able to plant potato seeds. <laughs> so what are they meant to do then? Do you think we should go out every, every month, every year with sandwiches? Is that your answer, like some sort of buffet, an all-you-can-eat thing, once a year? <laughs> oh, oh God! You see, it is bad. I, you know, I don't oh. want to come across harsh. We, mm. th they've got nothing. We oh. waste stuff here. Waste annoys me just as much. Right. When I see sandwich shops chucking stuff out yeah. and bin bags binning it, yeah. when there's people out there who are hungry, it's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't, I don't understand. Right. It's a problem that isn't being so solved. Your, so your conclusion for these people, because there's no water where they are, right, is move. That, that is your honest, they should well, move. Well, well, what's your solution? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't, I don't even uh, pretend to know. Um, but... But, I tell you, it's not just, just, it's sticking a, what's that saying? I don't know, it's sort of sticking a plaster over a hole or something, and the yeah. plaster comes off, it's a problem again. <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's it's, the saying, yeah. It's the same... I think that was Mark Twain. Um, no... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like candy. <laughs> Carl, look at it this way. Supposing people come to this, they haven't, they don't, they didn't like The Office, Extras, me, Steve, Idiot Abroad, The Ricky Gervais Show, didn't like any of that, but they thought, hold on, they're doing something for charity, I'll check this out. They've had a whale of a time, they've laughed at everything, they're gonna go and buy all the guides still available on iTunes now. That, that is shameless. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm doing a live stand-up comedy tour at the end of the year. You can check out the details on RickyGervais.com. <laughs> Ah, oh, just do something for charity, or not, it's up to you.